Good Sunday morning. Good morning. This is Sherman Cash and Lisa Cash coming to you with Sunday School. We would like to say that we represent Mount Sinai Baptist Church in Rockingham, North Carolina, where our pastor is Reverend D.R. Bennett, our co-pastor and First Lady Reverend Pat Bennett. We are so happy and honored yes. to be with you this morning. Sharon Cash, can you start us off with a word of prayer? Love to, love to. Let us pray. Kind Father, it's in the name of Jesus we come to you this morning. Thank you for another beautiful day. And thank you, Father, for your grace and mercy. It took care of us all this time until this important time right now. We ask you to lead us to God as Father. We go through this lesson today so we may grow better to understand and say, Mighty God, you are. In Jesus' name, we thank you and pray. Amen. 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 So you have a song for us this morning. Yeah, yeah, we're going to try a little something. Here. Okay. Pray with us. There is none like you. No one else can touch my heart like you do. I can search throughout eternity, Lord, and find there is none like you. There is none like you. No one else can touch my heart like you do. And I can search throughout eternity, Lord, and find there is none, there is none, there is none, there is none, there is none like you. I believe that might have been all right, Sherman Cash. Thank, thank you, you. Oh, Holy right. Spirit. Thank you. Oh, amen, amen, amen. All right. So, okay. Today's lesson is the righteous branch. It's coming out of Jeremiah twenty-three one through eight. All right, I'll read that scripture starting at verse uh, one in chapter twenty-three of Jeremiah. Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, saith the Lord. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God of Israel against the pastors that feed my people. Ye have scattered my flock and driven them away. You have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doing, saith the Lord, and I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all countries whither I have driven them, and I will bring them again to their folds, and they shall be fruitful and increase, and I will set up shepherds over them which shall feed them, and they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed, neither shall they be lacking, saith the Lord. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch, and a king shall reign and prosper, and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. In his days Judah shall be saved, and Israel shall dwell safely. And this is the name whereby he shall be called, the Lord our righteousness. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that they shall no more say, The Lord liveth, which brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. But the Lord liveth, which brought up and which led the seed of the house of Israel out of the north country and from all countries whither I had driven them, and they shall dwell in their own land. God's word for God's people. This message is a timely message. Now, yes. I'll be honest, when I first went over it, I told my husband, I don't, I'm, I'm not very excited about this mm. one. <laughs> but because it's a one of the lessons that is not just good times and encouragement, mm. hope and encouragement, yes. this is actually about leaders mm -hmm. that's right that 
all, we, we have to agree that God is sovereign and there is no leader in any position in the country, in, in the world, in the church, sure. in the county, in the government that, that God hasn't sovereignly placed there and he has expectations of them. Indeed, yes, so this yes. is Old Testament Jeremiah mm -hmm. telling the leaders of that time what God expected from them mm -hmm. and how they were measuring up. Right. Today's aim, fact, to confirm that God is in control of all things, including people at the highest level of leadership. Principle, to teach that God demands those in leadership submit to Him ultimate to His ultimate authority and not act independently in, of Him. Application of Scripture, to urge those in leadership to look for God for guidance, direction, and wisdom on how to lead those He has put in their care. All right, all right. So that's a big challenge for today's mm -hmm. lesson. Yes, it is. We want, to, we want to teach that God demands that those in leadership submit to his ultimate uh -huh. authority and not act independently of him. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, and, and there's nothing new under the sun. True. So if God gave this word to Jeremiah, all the way back before Jesus, but it is still applicable today yes, it is. that yes. leaders must follow God. That's true. Yes. To be pleasing mm -hmm. in God's sight. Amen. So Amen. we are going to go with some questions and try to questions from the scripture and try to apply them, okay. answer them and apply them for today. Okay. Uh, question number one. Let me read that one. Okay. Question number one. How do we know that pastors is speaking of shepherds? Well, that comes to our first outline. Um, they refer to shepherds as pastors tell us that the term pastor speaks of shepherds, meaning that uh, pastors today, what was what so called in in, in uh, ancient days, the shepherds were taking care of the flock, the sheep. That's right. And That's so, right. So when we look at the first verse, mm -hmm. twenty three one one, it says, "Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture." So God is comparing. The people of Israel, that's who he's talking mm -hmm. about in this this um, scripture. He's comparing them to a flock of sheep. Right. So the pastor is equal to the shepherd. Right. Uh, take care of his flock. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Let's go to the next question. Okay. Let's go to number two. Um, how was it? What was the idea of shepherding used in ancient Israel? So in ancient Israel, the shepherd was um, a common designation for a king. Mm -hmm. In ancient Israel, they referred to the kings as the shepherd, okay. like the ruler of the flock. But they also used it for the priests, the Levites, and civil leaders. So pretty much anybody who had people to take care of okay. under them were considered shepherds mm -hmm. in ancient Israel. Okay, taking care of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, so number three, what kind of job was Judah's leaders doing? What kind of job were Judah's leaders doing? Mm -hmm. God was not happy with oh, them no. at all. He was what? not pleased <laughs> with them. We, we know when it starts with woe. Mm -hmm. Yes. We, we found out that woe yes, is not, not a good, good thing. No, that when when the Old Testament <laughs> uses woe, when the New Testament uses woe, that means bad things yes, so bad yeah, things yes, yes so he said whoa if if woe is coming to the pastors that means god is not happy with you mm -hmm. and something is bad is coming your way mm -hmm. so in verse two he says you 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 you're not you scattered my flock you've mm -hmm. driven them away you have not visited them mm -hmm. and and so i will visit upon you the evil of your doing saith the lord this goes back to the scripture we talked about in Galatians, 
whatsoever a man yes, so, sows, yes. uh, that will he also reap. Right. So what goes around comes around. This is God oh. saying, what you did to my flock, hmm. oh, I'm about to put back on you oh, so, even more. So they were not so, doing a good job. It's so important to be a godly leader. It's so, so very important. I think that oh, sometimes people take leading, especially in the church, not seriously. Hmm. You know, people will take a promotion on their job seriously mm -hmm. because I get more money. I get more responsibility. Right. I want to make sure I, I do a better job. I learn about the job. I learn about the qualifications. Mm -hmm. But then they get in church and, you know, you can uh -huh. correct me if I'm not wrong. And I want a title. I want, want to be called a leader of something, mm -hmm. but I haven't studied it. I don't know anything about it. Sometimes I just got saved. Mm -hmm. I get into church uh -huh. and now I want to be a deacon. Now I not only am I called to preach, I just got saved two weeks ago. I not only am I called to preach, but now I want to be a pastor. Oh. So it's like, you're not taking serious. the calling as serious as it is, but that's why this message is so mm -hmm. timely because if you see, that God is saying, no, I expect mm -hmm. a lot yes. from anybody who I have allowed to become a leader. So what I hear you saying, I want the title, but I don't want responsibilities of the leader. Well, some people, I didn't say that, but some people feel that way. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. And I'm saying, yes, I, you, well, you crave to be a leader. Mm -hmm but you're not counting the cost right. and you're not studying to yes. show yourself approved. Okay. If you want to be a leader in the church, you should know some Bible. Amen. That's all I'm saying. Okay. okay. All right. Uh, let's, number six. Uh, what was God's ultimate provision for his people going to be? What was God's ultimate provision for his people? Oh, what was he going to do? So yes. he said, he did say, he said in, in, um, the next few verses that he was going to raise up mm -hmm. new shepherds, new leaders that would take yes, care right. of his flock the way that he wanted them right. to. But ultimately that branch of David, which we know is our Messiah. Yes. Who? Jesus. That is who mm -hmm. when Jesus comes back, mm -hmm. he is going to be the true shepherd. Yes. The good. He yes. is already a, our good shepherd. Yes, he he is. is already the true shepherd. He is the shepherd that all pastors are supposed to be modeling after. That's right. That's but, right. but see, it's even more than that because we, we, if we take it out of the church like Israel did, Israel said for the Levites, mm -hmm. Israel, Israel said for their civil leaders. So we're talking about even our government leaders. Yes, right. Are we, we're not saying you have to be Baptist. We're saying if God lets you be a leader, he's expecting you to take care of his flock, his people, yes. like he would. Amen. Okay. Yeah, that's it. All right. Uh, let's look at number nine. Uh, what comparisons show how great the future uh, restoration will be? I like it. I got excited right. when I was reading it. You know, when we read in King James, it sometimes you, we don't get it like we could, but mm -hmm. he was saying in verses seven and eight, you see that comparison. So he is saying to the people, not only you, people will not say anymore, mm -hmm. that is the Lord God of Israel who led those people out of Israel. Right. Egypt. Mm -hmm. You remember how he did it. You remember the miracles that mm -hmm. were performed and everything. Everybody who watches, what's the movie that comes Ten on? The Ten Commandments. Yeah. You So no longer will people say, will that be what your God is known <laughs> for? No, no, no. When I come back, there is going to be even more miraculous because yes. I'm going to bring all of my people from the north, I'm going to bring them from every com country they've been to, they've been scattered to, mm -hmm. and I'm going to bring them all together. And that's going to overshadow yes. what happened when what I brought day. them out of Egypt. <laughs> <laughs> what a day. What a day. What a, day, what a time. <laughs> oh, yes. What yes. a time. Okay, let's look at some practical points. All right. Uh, spiritual leaders are held to a higher standard. 
God will deal severely with them if they mislead or mistreat his people. Yes, so mm. we read that in the first two verses, mm -hmm. but the associated scripture that our, that our um, Sunday school lesson leads us to is Ezekiel chapter 34. And I'm going to read a couple of, of the verses because I think it is when God says the same thing in more than one place in the Bible, what happened was God spoke through another person right. at another time. Now, Jeremiah and Ezekiel were not roommates. <laughs> they weren't like the disciples. You know, they weren't walking right. together. So they both were inspired by the Holy Spirit. And this is, this is what Ezekiel 34, I'm starting at verse 1. The word of the Lord came to me, son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Woe to you shepherds of Israel who only take care of yourselves. Should not shepherds take care of the flock? You eat the curds, clothe yourselves with the wool and slaughter the choice animals, but you do not take care of the flock. You have not strengthened the weak or healed the sick or bound up the injured. You have not brought brought back the strays or searched for the lost. You have ruled them harshly and brutally. So it goes on until verse 16, but, the, but Ezekiel brings it out even more of what kind of shepherd the Lord is expecting you yes, to be. Right, he right. really does not want you to be concerned about yourself. Mm -hmm. it's, it's more like he's saying, I put you in that position to take care of my sheep. That's right. Now I'm going to take care of you and I can do it however I want to, mm -hmm. but your job is to take care of my right. sheep. If they're hurt, mm -hmm. go bind them up. That's true. Go get them. If they yeah. have gone astray, let's break it down. Let's Go break it them. down. Go get them. If they haven't been to church in a few weeks, check on them. A few months. Go check on them. If they're now they they've been out there all alone, away from the flock. What happens? The enemy can get them. The you're enemy by yourself. roaming to and fro, mm -hmm. just seeking whom he can devour. Who, who who whom he can devour. Now your little sheep has been bitten up mm. or distracted about surely about to and you got to go as a good shepherd and get that sheep Amen. and bring it back. Amen. So that that is what mm -hmm. God is requiring mm -hmm. as as the standard of a good shepherd. Think about the flock first. Now, so we're not just talking about pastors we're talking about anybody who has authority. Yes. So yes. when we talk about, we are a married couple. Mm -hmm. And so we're the family and Sherman Cash is the head of this family. So if anybody in this family is going astray, who's supposed to go see about them? Got to go get them. Who's re, who's ultimately responsible? I am. Now, if I don't, now things might be going on. If I don't let Sherman Cash know, mm -hmm. this is there's a problem in the camp. Mm -hmm. This one is going astray. This one's doing this. You might want. I now I do have some responsibility, but he's been appointed the spiritual leader That's right. of this family. Mm -hmm. All right. That's Suppose true. I'm a principal of a school. Then all those mm -hmm. teachers mm -hmm. and all those students are my flock. That's right. I'm I'm supposed to take care of them just the same. Indeed. Yes. Okay. Have I gone too far with that one? That's Probably, it. but okay. okay. You got the point across. You got to share the point. <laughs> okay. Okay. Let's let's do another one. Now. God desires the leaders of His people to care for the needy. They're needy, not to be selfish leaders. So I think I covered that one. Yes. God desires the leaders of his people to care for their needs, mm -hmm. not to selfishly lead them astray. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. I'll do the next point. All of us will face the Lord on the day of judgment. Oh, yes, man. Yes, ma'am. That's one you cannot get away with. You got to stand for yourself. Uh, you can't say, well, so-and-so did this. And but what about so-and-so? No, you got to stand for yourself. That's right. That's right. All right. Our next point. 
you want to get that phone. When Christ returns in all of his glory, it will be far greater than when the children of Israel were released from Pharaoh's slavery. Mm. So that's what we discussed. Uh, yes. That that as as incredible and amazing and what miraculous yes. the whole situation was with all of the slaves being being freed mm-hmm. from Egypt. When Jesus comes back, that's going to be even more. The even finale. more. Oh my goodness. Uh, what a day. Amen. What a time. Yes. If only. Mm. <laughs> it's going to be a day. It will be a day. Oh, and we will God. see it. Yes, we'll yeah, see amen. it. Amen. We will see it. Okay. Let's go a little further in this discussion. How do pastors scatter flocks today? Why does God take this so seriously? Well, I'm going to I'm going to answer the second part and let you answer the first part. I say God takes takes it so seriously if his flock gets scattered. Mm-hmm. So, because he wants his flock all together yes. and all taken care of because when one sheep goes astray, they are vulnerable. Mm-hmm. Not They're vulnerable. They're not going to be well kept. Uh They're probably not going to be as well fed and they can get completely destroyed. Mm -hmm. And God does not want to lose any of his sheep. He doesn't, which, and and so I'm going to say we are the sheep. Mm -hmm. So God doesn't want to lose any of his children. And so, Really, God doesn't want any of us to, number one, not be saved. And number two, if you are saved and you have started walking down that path of salvation, he doesn't want you to get removed from the path too far to come back. That's true. That's very important to him. So then you answer the question, how do pastors scatter flocks today? How does pastors scatter flocks? One, several weeks one um, division, um, when I mean say division, uh, use the pulpit to bash people, have double standards for certain people. Um, um, because the pastor set the, set the tone, set the examples. He could do this by scaring the flock, by uh, condoning one person for doing a little something, and other people are just doing whatever they want to, and they just Gloss it over. You're having favorites. Yes. So your favorites don't get called mm-hmm. out when they do something wrong mm-hmm. and other people do. Right. Right. And you see this and you say, why? What's going on here? And that's one, I think, the key reasons um, of how pastors could scatter the flock today. Divide the vision in, in the king in the house. I agree. The other thing is not using sound doctrine. So when mm-hmm. you, you know, some pastors will come up with, um, their own doctrine mm. that is close to what the Bible is saying, but not all the way. Mm. And so what happens with that? You know, one of our, our slogans at our church is the word works. If you work, work the, the word. word, but if you don't know the word or you're using a doctrine that's made up by man, that's not God's word. So that might work for that pastor, mm. but the person, the people following that pastor, whatever the pastor is doing might not be working for Mm -hmm. them. And so then they can feel like, well, this Christianity thing, this Bible Mm -hmm. thing, this word doesn't work for me. So Mm -hmm. I'm going to a different religion. Oh gosh. Okay. And then I'm astray from the flock. Yes. Yes. You know, um, sound doctrine. You, that, was, that was a key point. You're not preaching sound doctrine. Mm-hmm. Just preach the word. Preach the word. Preach the word. Preach the word. Teach the word. Mm-hmm. And take care of the people under you the way you think God would take care of them. And then the way, what besides reading it mm-hmm. in the Bible, it always goes back, how would you want to be treated? Mm-hmm. How would you want to be treated? Isn't that the golden That's rule? It. Do unto mm-hmm. others That's as they would... Right. You would have them do unto you. Yes. Well, we hope you got something out of this lesson, the righteous branch. Mm -hmm. The righteous branch is Jesus Christ. And we have been reminded 
of the expectations of not just pastors but leaders yes. in our society today. Yes. I thank God, thank God for God. His Word. I thank God for my husband. And let's close in a word of prayer. Thank you, Father. Yes. Thank you, Father, for this word. Thank you, Father, for this study. Thank you, Father, for just being who you are, Lord. Continue to keep us, continue to lead us, continue to guide us. In the precious name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen. Amen.